Who's the one who takes care of you? That's what I'm thinking about right now. Amen. Amen. You know there's times you have things in your life you have to do, and you're nervous about it. (laughs) You have negative feelings and thoughts, but if God's called you, who can stop you? You certainly can't stop yourself. Amen. Amen. So let's let's hold on to that this morning as we turn our turn our Bibles to Psalms one twenty seven. I just couldn't quite get away from this thought here as I studied and prepared. So I trust to be a blessing. Amen. Psalms 127.1 Except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain that build it. Except the Lord keep the city, the watchman waketh but in vain. Let's bow our heads here together. I'll ask everyone to be sincere here with me. Let's just bow our heads together and unite our faith here. Lord Jesus, how we need You, Father, to build this house, Lord. Father, this great economy, Lord, that we're in, Lord God, we need You to build it, Father. We need You, Father, to come this morning, Lord. As we are feeling in ourselves inadequate, Lord, Father, You're certainly more than able to reach that gap, Lord. Father, that gap that exists between where we are now and where we need to be, Lord. So, Lord Jesus, I pray You'd help each and every one of us to get out of Your way, Lord. Father, for You are the Builder, Lord God. You are the One that comes, Lord Jesus. And you lay that brick, you lay that mortar, all we have to do there is help you and assist you, Lord God. Stand there and hand you, Father, tools that you need, Father, to work on our lives, Lord. Hand things over to you, not hold things back, but give it all to you, Lord. Help us, Lord, we pray. We need you, Father. Help me to get out of the way, Lord. Help us all, Father. Come, Lord Jesus, we pray just now. We need you, Lord. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. Amen. You may be seated there. Amen. I'd like to speak this morning on the economy of God. Amen. The economy of God. Amen. Amen. I always like to look at the definition of things, so forgive me if I'm a little too analytical here, but the definition here we see in the dictionary of economy. And this is important as we'll get into. We need to understand exactly what economy means. I believe we've all probably heard this saying, the economy of God. Uh, I haven't heard a whole lot preached on it myself personally, and I thought it would be intriguing to study on it. So I did. But it really is a simple thing. If you look throughout the message and you try to find, I thought this might be, you know, there might be many things in here that just I could not comprehend, that I could not understand. Because the economy is so vast. The economy of God is so vast as we'll see. The economy means the wealth and resources of a country or a region especially in terms of the production and consumption of goods and services. Amen? Amen. Amen. Think about how that scripture we first read in Psalms 127 there. Think about that as we go through these things. The second kind of definition is careful management of available resources. Amen. Hmm. Amen. Amen. So basically, you know, kind of to sum it up, I just kind of put it like this. The wealth and resources of a nation... And that's a con- the definition is the wealth and resources of a nation and all the means by which it is created, maintained, and improved. Yeah. So think about that. It's, it's important. I want to stress this here. I'll take a little bit of time to stress this. It's important that we apply and, and bring everything back to this definition as we go down through all these scriptures and all these thoughts. Amen. Because that's how I had to do it to make it perfectly clear. It was perfectly clear when I did Amen. that. Amen. An economy consists of an economic system. And look at this with spiritual eyes. 
comprising the production, distribution, or trade and consumption of limited goods and services between two agents. The agents can be individuals, businesses, organizations, or governments. Transactions occur when both parties agree to the value or price of the transacted good commonly expressed in the currency. Amen. Think about this. The currency we're going to get into in the economy of God is faith. Amen. Amen. I'm getting ahead of myself, but that truly is the currency Amen. that you use to buy and get what you need. Amen? Amen. Amen? Think about it. Without faith, no man can please God, right? Amen. No transactions without faith. Amen. Brother Richard, if you don't have money right now, can you buy anything in this economy, in this worldly economy? You go to the store and you say, I want this, that, and the other, and they ask you for money and you say, I don't have it. And they say, I'm sorry, you ain't getting it. Yeah. Amen. Yep. Amen. That's right. Yeah, Amen. that's right. A given economy is a result of a set of processes that involves its culture, values, education, technological evolution, history, social organization, and so forth. Amen. Amen. These factors give it context, content, and set the conditions and parameters which the economy functions. Yes, right. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Let's go back to the beginning here, shall we? I like when the Pharisees came to Jesus and they were talking to him about a hard hard question. You know, they come to him and tried to trick him up, right? Yes, sir. And they tried to say, you know, what about uh, this marriage and divorce thing? Yes, sir. You know, and that was a hard thing to deal with, right? Yes, sir. But they come to him and, and I like Jesus basically just said, Go back to the beginning. Yes, sir. You know, it's all mixed up right now. Yeah, all these variables have entered in through the course of time yeah. to create all these complex issues and situations that's so hard to understand. Go back to the beginning where it was simple. God laid it all out in the beginning, so that's what we ought to do right now, right? We can surely see this economy right there in the beginning, the economy of God. Amen? Amen. So, let's go back there in Genesis. We're going to kind of jump around in Genesis a little bit if you want to jump with me. Amen. Genesis 2 there. Fifteen. And the Lord God took the man and put him in the Garden of Eden to dress it and keep it. And can you imagine this? God put the man in the climax of His creation. On the seventh, all these things were all done. Then the climax of God's creation comes, and He creates man and puts him there, right? And He says, "This is this is for you to keep. This is my great the the wealth." I mean, can you imagine? Uh, just go down through Genesis and see all the rivers and the waters and all the vegetation, and all the rich, lush, everything that was there was for them. Yes, right. Amen. This was God's place. This is His economy. They put Amen. Him in. Amen. Amen. And He was in control of everything, wasn't He? If he didn't like the weather, he would just speak. And it would change. Right? If he didn't like where this mountain was or this tree was, he would just speak and it would move. Right? So he had complete control. And I believe that's God's desire for us. Isn't it? We're supposed to have complete control of this economy that we are in. Amen? Amen. Yes, sir. He named all the animals even. So he was a master scientist. Knew all the names, right? Amen. Then what happened was in Genesis 2, let's continue reading there, in 16. And the Lord commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou may freely eat, but the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it, for in the day thou shalt eatest thereof thou shalt surely die. So we see two economies here start to to come out in front. Take root here. Take picture. God always has free moral agency. We've got to remember that in this economy. Amen. Amen. God has always allowed free moral agency to be there in His spiritual economy so you can choose what you want. You can choose God, His economy, or you can choose Satan and His economy. Right? Right? You can. Same thing in the beginning. Praise the Lord. 
Amen. Excuse me here. So, we definitely see this in the beginning. And I want to move past this a little bit here. I don't know why, but I need to move on. Amen. You know, the importance of this economy is, is, is just, I can't overstress it because this is a little thing I, I found in a commentary. That it says that Jesus talked much about money. Sixteen of the 38 parables were concerned with how to handle money and possessions. In the Gospel, an amazing one out of ten verses deal directly with the subject of money. The Bible offers 500 verses on prayer, less than 500 verses on faith, but more than 2,000 verses on money and possessions. Can you imagine that? I mean, it's, this was stressed. Amen. This was, this was something we're to pay attention to. Amen. Turn to John 3 with me, if you would, please. Thank you, brother. Appreciate it. John 3 3. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot. See the kingdom of God. So, this economy is something that we have to understand. We have to be born again into it, right? It's like this. If, you don't, if you're not born into this economy, there's no way you can understand it. There's no way you can participate in it. In this worldly economy that involves our uh, money of currency that we buy in things for exchange. If you don't understand how that works, how are you going to participate in it? How are you going to effectively participate in it? So Jesus stresses here, you must be born again or you cannot even see this kingdom, this economy of God, right? That's why it ought to be our goal. Everyone in here, young people included, it ought to be your goal to receive that Holy Ghost. That ought to be your whole life's goal. Amen. And then when you receive the Holy Spirit, now you're entered into the spiritual economy. Amen. Now you can participate. Amen. People think that's an end, but it's not an end. Amen. It's just the beginning. Amen. Oh my, that is such a fallacy. It is not the end. The Holy Spirit is not the end, right? Yeah. When you get that Holy Spirit, the battles start right there because you are now entering into that economy Amen. that's been waiting for you before the foundations of the world. Amen. Amen. You was in God's mind before the foundation of the world, right? Amen. You were always there. Amen. Amen. He always wanted you there. You're just now realizing it right now. Amen. Amen. We come to this economy, this spiritual economy that's so rich. God has prepared for us. There are so many promises for you that you need to buy with your faith. Amen. Amen. So let's quit complaining and murmuring Amen. and thinking we can't do it because you can't. God through you can. Amen. Amen. That's why the Bible says, take His faith. Amen. Amen. It's God's faith that Amen. you buy. Amen. He gives that to you. Amen. But you must ask, seek, and knock. Amen. Amen. You must desire it. And that's what we're getting into with this spiritual economy. That's why the Bible, I'm getting ahead of myself again, but the treasures of this world, that's the issue with it. It's not about having money in this world. That's not necessarily the problem. It's when that's what you desire. That's the problem. So desire that faith. Amen. Because wherever your heart is, that's where your treasure will be. Amen. Praise the Lord. Help us, Lord. We need God's help, don't we? Amen. Break this yoke, Lord. Amen. The devil tries to stop you with so many things and purposes in your life. He doesn't want you to understand this economy. Satan knows that if you understand this economy, you can amass riches beyond your wildest imaginations. My father is rich. We'll get to that. He's rich. He has all things. Amen. Can you imagine a man that has infinite amount of riches? We cannot even imagine that. It's uncomprehendable. But that's okay. You don't have to understand it. Just believe it. Amen. Amen. It's for you. Amen. Satan doesn't want that. He's trying to hinder us right now. I feel it. I don't know. There's something that's, that's striking at me. Before I came in out there, I don't know. I was just kind of, something was really a spiritual battle. I don't know what's going on. If it's just me or if there's something else going on here. But Satan is trying to hinder this right now. He is. 
He tried to stumble me up at the beginning. I don't know what's going on. So we'll just blast him on out of here. Amen. So raise your faith and pull. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. I want to be. I want to see all you to be spiritual millionaires when we leave this room. Amen. Amen. You got needs. You pull on it here this morning. Amen. Amen. God has all the faith you can ever need. Don't worry. He ain't gonna run out. Amen. Amen. It's like that example of the ocean. You know, there ain't you, your little fishy swimming around there. He ain't gonna drink too much water. Amen. He ain't gonna make that ocean go dry. Amen. You're not gonna make that ocean go Amen. dry, brother Keith. Amen. Take everything you need. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Yes, sir. Lord. Satan's not gonna have his way this morning. Amen. Amen. Yes, he's not. Amen. God have his way. Amen. Praise the Lord. Romans one twenty. If you would please. For the invisible things of Him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even His eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. So we see there's parallels here. We see God in the creation, right? We see the spiritual through the natural, right? So that's why I'm getting at here. There are so many things that we can look at our natural economy and we can look at and compare and see and understand the spiritual economy. Types and shadows. God's law, He's, He set all these things up like that so we can understand. Our finite minds can understand by looking, because look, we're human beings. We've got to have tangible things that we can see, right? That's how we're made. It's hard for That's why it's so hard many times for us to enter the spiritual realm. I'm talking about myself here. Because we can't see it. Paul said the things that are unseen are eternal, and the things that are seen will perish. Amen. Amen. So we can use these things that we can see as an example to help us, you know, in our, our feeble, finite mind. It's okay. We can do that. And God said so right here because He's through all the creation. Amen. The things that we can see, the resurrection, look at the flowers and all the things, how they come Amen. up and then they have life and they Amen. wilter and get old and die and they come right back up the next season, right? Amen. So God has set these things. He has mercy on us. He knows our infallibilities. Amen. He knows our incapabilities, right? He does. Amen. So He has mercy. So I'm glad that God has set these things up here so that we can see this spiritual economy through the natural economy. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. 1 Corinthians 2.10 But God hath revealed them unto us by His Spirit, for the Spirit searcheth all things Yea, yea, the deep things of God. Verse 11, For what man knoweth the things of man, save the spirit of man which is in him? Even so, the things of God knoweth no man but the Spirit of God. You want to have eyes to see this spiritual economy. God will show it to you. Amen? That's why God works in you through you to show you this economy. Ephesians 1.17 That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom, in revelation, in Him, in the knowledge of Him, rather, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened that ye may know what is the hope of His calling and the riches of the glory of this inheritance in the saints and what is the exceeding greatness of His power to us, word, who believe according to the working of His mighty power. Do you see that? Amen. He, the, this, is, this is something. Amen. Yes, sir. Let's go to Saul and company, and let's look at them for a minute. Let's, let's see for a minute how that Saul, he had some trouble seeing. He did. He did. He didn't quite have the spiritual eyes that David had. And I know that God, and believe that God, put these two characters together, amen, to show this, to illustrate this point, because this is exactly what we need for this spiritual economy. We don't want to be Saul's, do we? We don't want to be like that. Amen. Let's read that here in 2 Samuel 26. We have David, and I'll just kind of paraphrase for the sake of time here, but it's 1 Samuel 26, 8 through 12 is where we're kind of at. So we have Saul pursuing after David for no reason because of his own jealousy and, uh, you know, maybe his anger, maybe his. Uh, a lust for power and popularity because he saw that uh, they ascribed to David's ten thousands and me only thousands, you know, type of thing. You know how he had that working on his heart, right? Yes. So 
there was things going on in the economy of Satan that, was, that Saul was heavily intertwined with, that he could not get away from because he couldn't see. But we have David kind of running from him at times, kind of trying to stay away from him. And we have them come in this situation here to a cave, right? I believe it was a cave. And Saul, it says in here that the Lord caused a deep sleep to come upon Saul and his people. And therefore, David saw this and his men saw this and said, go in there and kill them. There's, look, the, the Lord's delivered him under your hands. And David said, I will not do this. I will not do this at all. I will not touch the Lord's anointed. So you see, even, even God brings this out in, this, in the natural with this deep sleep that he could not know. He had no idea what was going on around him. His life was in danger, in perils. He could have been killed, right? In this economy that he's in, and all these, remember now, this, this spiritual economy of Satan now, there's many ways to look at it. Satan has rule over the natural economy in many ways, and God's involved in the natural economy in many ways too. And Satan is involved in the spiritual economy, and so is God. They, you know, Satan loves to follow God. He loves to, to take what God has done and pervert it. He loves to be a follower. He's not a leader. He's not. God is the leader. God is the supreme leader. Amen. Satan always follows that up. So that's where Satan's always trailing behind, trying to copy, right? Yeah. He's trying to pervert everything. Yeah. So, so that's why there's, 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 there's parallels here. The spiritual economies, the natural economies. Amen. So Saul was caught up in, this, in the natural economy, no doubt, right? Yeah. In the spiritual economy as well. Yeah. Showing that in this illustration. He was blind. He couldn't even see what was going on around him. We don't want to be like that. Amen. 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 God's economy brings life. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. How about Nicodemus in John 3? How he comes to God. He comes to Jesus there. And he says in verse 4, Nicodemus said unto him, How can a man be born again when he's old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb? So Jesus starts talking to Nicodemus here about the economy. He does. You must be born again. Amen. Amen. Yes, sir. That's the door of the spiritual economy. How can these things be? He, you know, he talks about all these things Jesus brings out and starts to try to teach him the basics of the economy, the door. Yeah. The entering in of the door of this spiritual, this great, vast spiritual economy. And Nicodemus is like, wow, how can these things be? Right? Because, you know, Nicodemus was caught up in Satan's economy. It was blinding his eyes. He couldn't hardly believe this, this, this thing that Jesus was telling him. My. Deuteronomy 15. I like to use a lot of scriptures, so I hope that's okay. I mean, I, I just just want to. That's what I fall back on the scriptures. You know, <laughs> yeah, I know they're infallible. I know that there's no way that they can be. They can't fall or fail, or you know. And, and if I if I think there's an error there, it's just my own lack of understanding. <laughs> Amen. So we can trust the, the word of God. Amen. All right, Deuteronomy 15, five through six is where we're at. Looking at this, how that. The economy of the United States was built upon a great economy of God. It was, it was built upon the economy of God in the beginning now. That's why, we, that's why the United States has, the, has had, uh, we're, we're definitely falling, but has had the greatest economy the world has ever seen. Nothing has ever come close to this. And we take it for granted because we've lived in it. We've grown up in it, a lot of us. You know, uh, No doubt for a couple hundred years now, it's been a great economy. And we just, it's, it's so common to us. But if we could only step outside and really look back in, you would, wow, this is something. I mean, this, this just breaks the, all records of history. So Deuteronomy 15, 5 through 6. Only if thou carefully hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe, to observe and to do all these commandments which I command you this day. Now look, he set the condition. This is what made the, the, the economy of, of the United States so great. Because we did verse 5. In the beginning, we did verse 5. Verse 6. For the Lord thy God blessed thee as he promised, and thou shalt lend unto many nations, but thou shalt not borrow, and thou shalt reign over many nations, but they shall not reign over thee. Amen. Does everyone realize that the United States has had the, what do they call it, the, the currency of the world, the uh, what's it called, Brother Keith? Oh, sorry, I forget. It's, it's a reserve, the reserve currency of the world. Everyone buys and brings our, buys our currency so they can have that as their reserve, right? 
that's like an investment. Like the Chinese, they own a third of the United States, I believe, something like that, a large portion. Amen, because they have a lot of our money, right? So look at that. Can you see that there? The Scripture says right there, if you listen and hearken unto the commandments of the Lord, then you'll lend to many nations. <laughs> They'll use your money. Amen? You won't be borrowing from anybody. You won't need to because you'll be so rich, right? Your economy will be so great. And you'll reign over many nations, but they shall not reign over you. I thought that was a powerful Scripture that really illustrated this, this economy. The natural economy and the spiritual economy. As we'll get into, the spiritual economy was first. That's why the natural economy could be so righteous and great. But we're falling away from that, saints. Psalms 112, 1-3. Praise ye the Lord. Blessed is the man that feareth the Lord, that delighteth greatly in His commandments. His seed shall be mighty on the earth. The generations of the upright shall be blessed. Wealth and riches shall be in His house, and the righteous shall endure forever. Amen. Oh my. Uh, I hope as everyone's seeing this connection Amen. that we're talking about here. Amen. My. Praise the Lord. So we definitely see a correlation here. A correlation is a mutual relationship or connection between two or more things. That word connection is a relationship in which a person, thing, or idea is linked or associated with something else. You see that? St. John 14, if you would turn there. So these economies, I mean, and that's what, you know, Satan takes advantage of that. He takes advantage of the fact that these all, all these things can be so mixed. Because as we said, when the Pharisees come to Jesus, and they said, they have this great question about putting away your wife and this marriage and divorce thing, right? And it was, and it, isn't that so complicated today? I mean, all the variables that have happened with the marriage and divorce and all the other things, all the circumstances, and just poor people putting conditions and things that happen. This is such a complicated thing. But that's what Satan wants, see? He wants things to be so complicated so it's so hard to understand what's, what's right and wrong. Black is black and white is white still. No matter how much time goes by, no matter what Satan does or doesn't do, no matter how complicated things get, black is black and white is white. We've got to get back to the black and the white. We do. This philosophy in this day and age, how people say that there's so, you know, there's so much intermingling and so much gray area going on. There is. Nobody wants black and white anymore. Amen. And that's what Satan wants us to desire. It, oh, it's okay. We can all blend together. You know, let's, let's mix and match and you know, just drop your beliefs and come to you know, whatever the economical movement's doing and you know, your workplace and all. We're trying to just diversify and, and tolerate everything. I, I agree with diversity and tolerance. I do. But not the way Satan's trying to apply it. Amen. He's trying to take your values away. He's trying to take the principles you hold true away. He's trying to make black and white gray. Yeah, that's right. Yes. Amen. But there is a correlation here. There, there truly is between these, all these economies. St. John 14, 15 through 21 is where we're going here. If you love me, keep my commandments black and white. Amen. If you love me, I mean, that's pretty simple, isn't it? Jesus says, if you love me, keep my word. Amen. Amen. Read the black and white. Keep that black and white. Amen. That's what, I, last time I checked, there's some red letters in there too, but there's a lot of black and white, right? Amen. Yes, sir. The red letters are just stressing. They're just saying these are really, really important. You know, look at this. Amen. So, if you love me, keep my commandments, and I will pray the Father, and he shall give another comforter, that you may abide with you forever. Even the Spirit of truth, there it is, the Spirit of truth will come to you. Amen. Whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth Him not, neither knoweth Him. But ye know Him, for He dwelleth in you and shall be in you. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come unto you. Yet Look at this. This is what I'm talking about as we go on here. This is the correlation. This is The definition is correlation. Let me refresh it. A mutual relationship or connection between two or more things. That's what we're talking about. See this connection that Jesus is talking about? Amen. A relationship in which persons, things, or ideas is linked. Look at this in verse 18. And I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you yet a little while. And the world seeth me no more. Because ye see me, because I live, yet ye shall live also. Amen. See the correlations we're talking about here. Amen. The spiritual economy. You will live, and we'll get into this, Satan's economy is death. Yes, sir. He yes. tries to disguise himself as light, yeah. as life. Yeah. Yeah. We'll get to that, Lord willing. 
Verse 20, this is it, right? This is one of the main highlights of this, of this portion. At that day ye shall know, I am in the Father, ye in me, and I in you. Can't get no more interconnected than that. We can't even understand that all the way. My. That's right. We receive it, brother. Amen. Verse 21. He that hath my commandments and keepeth them, he is, is he that loveth me, and he that loveth me shall be loved to my Father, and I will love him, and will manifest myself unto him. First Corinthians 4, eight. Now ye are full, now ye are rich, ye have reigned as kings without us, and I would to God ye did reign. So this is a rich economy. What do we really have here is the question. What do we really have? Because that's a lot of the problem. We don't fully always realize what we really have in this spiritual economy. Because so many times we go running after this natural economy. Block out your time one time, just once. Take a, take a week or whatever. And block out your time and see where you put all your time at. Make two categories. The, the natural economy and the spiritual economy. Do that one time. And see what you, oh, where, where all your time falls. Amen. Right? I, ch- I just, you know, it's a friendly challenge. Do that. Just to maybe, if you haven't already, it might open your eyes. Yeah, yeah. Now, I'm not trying to be legalistic here, but what I'm trying to say is let's put this in perspective. Amen. Amen. If you truly know and believe what we have, then you'll pay more attention to that Amen. concept that I just said. Amen. You'll watch where your time goes. Amen. Amen. There's a direct correlation between that. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. Balaam was a good example. He didn't fully understand what he had right there. Because there's many of us that will never interact with God like he did. But he threw it all away because he was more interested in this natural economy. He he did. Amen. So whatever you put first, that shows which one you believe in more. Hmm. All right. As I said in the beginning, Revelation twenty two twelve, you can you know through fourteen if you want to turn there. I am the Alpha and the Omega, verse thirteen, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. As I said in the beginning, this is true. My father is rich. Amen. He's the richest man there's ever been. Amen. Can you imagine a man so rich that he can continually give to his children down through the thousands and thousands of years and not even put a dent in his bank account? <laughs> That's something, isn't it? He just, he, he's rich. He's just so rich. I, we can't even... My. Amen. Romans eleven thirty three. Oh, the depth and riches of both the wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable are His judgments and His ways are past finding out. Right? Psalms 104.24 O Lord, how manifold are Thy works! In wisdom Thou hast made them all. The earth is full of Thy riches. So the earth is full of His riches. That would mean that heaven is so overfull with His riches that it spills over into earth, right? Because earth is the footstool, right? Yeah. So so it overflows right in there. Aren't you glad? Aren't you happy that, that we can cry out to God and He can overflow us with His riches? Amen. That it's not all kept up there in reserve and we, and we only get to see it when we go to heaven. You know, we get up there and now we can finally, wow, see the riches of God. No, it's not Amen. that way. Amen. His spiritual economy is right now on this Amen. earth. Amen. As much as Satan tries to blind your eyes from that, it's Amen. true. Amen. You know, Satan tries to make you look at this natural economy and it's so real. Like we said, we're beings that we, we have these five natural senses. You know, and, and whatever comes these five natural senses, many times we battle with, and making that our absolute. Like, oh, I see it, so you know it has to be true, right? No. No. no that's, that's not it. Those, all those senses are, are secondary to your, to your faith. Amen. Your spiritual sense. Amen. Praise the Lord. Yes, sir. Amen. Praise the Lord. So let's look a little bit more about what this economy is. This economy of God is. Is this all right here? Amen. Amen. All right. Okay. Ephesians 3. We'll go to Ephesians 3, 7. As your turn, let me read you a quote here. And hear ye him, 1958. The wheels of God's power in kingdoms can't turn because we got old, sluggy, dirty, axle grease, 
that don't belong there. Anybody ever feel that way? You get, a, get some things maybe in your joints, you know, you can't move as well, right? Some old, old dirt and sludge, it shouldn't be there. It's a byproduct of Satan's economy. Yeah. Feel all sluggish, amen? What we need tonight is the washing by the water through the Word, amen? The Holy Ghost power to come back into the church and start the wheels of God's economy turning. Amen. Amen. That's what we need. A little washing by the water of the Word. Amen. Amen. So remember that because Satan's trying to keep you away from that. He doesn't want you to be washed by the water of the Word. He doesn't want you to put much time into that. He doesn't want you to have uh, time allocated to the spiritual economy of God. He doesn't. And he'll fight you tooth and nail. He'll fight you every bit, everything that he's got, he'll fight you. Oh, I got to do this, and I got to do that, and I got to make a living for the family. And you got to do those things, yes, but they should not be a priority. They should not be your number one. They should not, it shouldn't be like this. I'm going to go do this in the, in the world and that, and I got to do my job, and I got to you know, spend time here and do this, that, and the other, and go buy this, go to the store, this. And then at the end of the day, I finally, if I have some time, I'll pray. That's not how it should be. No. So, Ephesians 3, 7. We'll turn there. Wherefore I was made a minister according to the gift of grace of God, given unto me by the effectual working of His power. In this economy, we'll see a lot about the working of God's power. Amen. Amen. <laughs> yes, sir. Unto me who am less than the least of all the saints is the grace given that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ. Amen. And to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery, which was from the beginning of the world, hath been hid, who hath created all things by Jesus Christ. Amen. So Paul was to make these unsearchable riches known to everyone, right? Amen. Colossians 1, 26 through 28 says, Even the mystery which hath been hidden from ages and from generations, but now is made manifest to the saints. Amen. In this hour, this is what this revelation is, is coming forth. The, the, you know, the, the Word was open to us, right? The seals were broken open. Amen. So now we have this unveiling, this revelation, this, this, this manifestation to the saints to whom God would make known what is the riches of His glory, of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Amen. Amen. This economy of God is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Amen. Amen. That's right. It's very simple. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. You know, I think many times we get so complicated on things, we try to make things what they're not. And that's basically all it is. Receive the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Then God will do the rest. You just got to get to that Holy Ghost. So many times we, you know, and even when we get it, then that's when the battle comes and Satan tries to make you think that you got to do it more. You got to keep going on. You got to do the work. You, as we said in the beginning, you've got to bridge the gap, right? That's what Satan wants you to think. Yeah. You are an instrument. You just yield. You're a vessel. Amen. God does the work. Yes, he sir. builds the economy. Yes, Amen. And it's so many times, the reason why he's not building, we say, oh God, why are you not building? Why is this not happening? Why is this not progressing? What's going on here? It's because you're in the way. Do you think that he... Think about this for a minute. What if you were at a construction site and you were up, up there up on the wall, right there, and they were building this wall, and you're right up on there on it, are they going to keep building with you right there standing in the way? Because they'll hurt you. Amen. They'll damage you. They'll, you'll be killed. I mean, whatever more. I mean, imagine this vast, mass construction site that's going on. There ain't no construction site any bigger than what God's doing in your life. There no, there's not one bigger than that, Amen. right? So therefore, get out of the way. Amen. Let the master builder do what he's supposed to do. Amen. Let him do his job. All you've got to do is assist him or do whatever he asks you to do, right? Amen. You just stand by and wait for him to give you instructions. Amen. Wait for him to ask you for something, whatever he needs. Yield yourself, amen? That's right, he'll ask whatever he needs. Just That's the position we've got to take. Lord, whatever you need. I'll do whatever you want. If he asks you to do something that you think you don't know how to do, he'll train you. Right? He'll put that in you. He'll put that knowledge and skill in you. What did he do when they were building the tabernacle? All these workers came forth who it said that God put wisdom and skill into these men to build this tabernacle, to fashion all these things. What if these men would have said, Hey, I don't know how to do that. I you know, I I can't I've never done that before. 
Or I'm just an amateur. I can't build this tabernacle for God. Right? God used these men. It wasn't the ability of these men, was it? It was God in these men. He come along and put that in them. I can't stress it enough because you are the instruments in this economy of God. You are the main focus in here. Oh my. I want to get ahead of myself here. Amen. So God is the master builder. The master construction foreman. Amen. 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 I want to be under Him. Amen. I don't want to be telling Him what to do. I don't want to be on that job site telling my boss what to do. He has so much more skills and abilities than I do. He knows exactly what's going on. He sees the plan. He has the drawings. He has the blueprint. He drew the blueprint. Amen. He knows He is so intimate with that plan. He knows exactly what's going on. All we have to do is stand by and listen to His instructions. He'll interpret, it. He'll interpret the blueprints to you. Whatever part you don't understand, uh, you know, I, I see this, that, and the other, but I don't quite see how these two go together. He'll come over and explain it to you. Just ask Him. Just get on your knees and ask Him. So many times we get so discouraged and we think that we got to understand everything and we think that we got to know exactly what this blueprint says. We do, but He'll reveal it to you. Not in your own power. Right? Lean not to your own understanding, right? Amen. Sometimes we think we understand it and we get ahead of ourselves yes, and we get a little ahead of him too, right? Amen. We start building and we get in the way and then he's like, oh, I, you know, and then he has to stop construction yeah. because he has to stop construction, hold everybody up on the site, blow the big siren, stop, we got somebody in the way. Yeah. Amen. Help us, Lord. Can, Amen. can anyone relate to this? Yes, sir. Am I the only one? No. God help us to get out of the way, out of our own Amen. thinking, out of our own minds. We want the mind of Christ. Yeah. We do. Amen. Amen. That is how you get it. That's how you increase the riches in this great economy of God. You can't do it yourself. You're a, you're a kind of natural being right now, right? Natural things. We can do many natural things, but let Him do the spiritual Amen. things. Amen. Oh my. Satan tries to trip us up in this. He truly has a false economy. Satan does. If you want to turn to 2 Corinthians, we'll show this here. 2 Corinthians 11. Let me, let me read this to you as you turn. In 2 Corinthians 11, 13 is where we're going to go. Uh, it says here in, in uh, Mark of the Beast, All right. And I saw a woman sitting upon a scarlet-colored beast, rich, full of names of blasphemy, false baptism, false economy, leading the people blindly, telling them they can just come to church, make the confession, and so forth, and do a Hail Mary, do a penance, ignorance, nonsense. So, Satan wants, you know, he, he's truly got a false economy. It's, it's real, it's tangible, we can, we can operate in it, we can, you know, we can be led by it, we can, we can, it can seem so great to us, but it's false. That's right. Just as Brother Brandon was saying here, that's what, this, that's what the, the, you know, the organization, the organizational church does. They're leading all these people to a false hope, a false light. Yeah. They genuinely, a lot of them probably think they're going the right way, they're in the right economy, they're... You know, they're taking the right steps. They're building it the right way. They're, they're all there building. And, you know, look at that. And in, in the world there, in these denominations, this organization, it's all about what you can do. It's your works, right? It's, it's about, you know, you doing this and doing that. Look at how there are some of those churches that have more of a ministry, active ministry, than we ever do. They're out here in the world doing this, that, and the other, and, and feeding the poor and, and doing all these things. You know, the ministry of sports. And, you know, I see sports ministries and all. You know, think about these things. They're doing so much. They're, they're trying to build the wall themselves. Yeah. The problem is they're not letting Christ do it. Yeah. They're not letting the foreman do it. They're trying, to, they're trying to be the foreman. They're trying to say they know how to do it. They're trying to interpret the drawing, the blueprints, right? That's what Satan wants. That's what Satan's trying to lead you to do. He's just as religious as... He's more religious than everybody else, right? He comes right in there. He wants you to follow this religious path. He'll just, he'll just skew it quite a bit. If a flight leaves from Los Angeles, a plane leaves from Los Angeles, and goes to New York. Let me just throw some figures out. If that plane skews, and forgive me, these may not be exact, but if that plane skews one degree from Los Angeles to New York, it's going to be off hundreds and hundreds of miles. Hundreds of, 
what a thousand miles, whatever, by one degree. Follow the straight and narrow way. Stay on that path, that middle road. Second Corinthians eleven thirteen. For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. <laughs> wow. Amen. Amen. That, that Greek word there is light, fire. Light and fire. That's what that word kind of translates to. Amen. So light, we know, is a very abundant natural resource, right? Very abundant. But the thing about light that we take for granted, it says here in the definition, light is a natural agent that stimulates sight and makes things visible. So Satan, you see what he's doing here? He's transforming himself into an angel of light. False light. False economy. Right? He's, and in this definition, look at this. A natural agent that stimulates sight. So he's trying to be this false stimulation of sight and making things visible. But the things he's making visible is false. Think about light. Let's go back to this example. Light is so common, right? We are so used to the sunlight being here. We are. We're so used to lights. We're so used to them, we take them for granted. But think about how valuable light is. Think about this. No light on the earth. Gone. You'd wish you had it. You, you couldn't do nothing else. That'd be it, right? So it's so valuable. It's one of the most valuable things we have. We take it for granted because it's, it's such an abundance. So don't take this economy of God for granted. Because it is so abundant. Because it is so vast. Don't let it become common. Amen. Amen. 1957. Life is the title here. And I read an article in the magazine one time that I was on, when I was on an airplane and it was about Hollywood. And it said, life begins after midnight. See that lie of the devil? Yeah. Talking about Hollywood and they're trying to portray these you know, big flashing. Life really begins after midnight, right? That's what he's saying here. You should come down on certain streets and things. And they had a picture uh, of Burkle's Queen. I'm not sure what that word means. And it said like this, how perverted that is. So he's looking at the lights and the, and the billboards and the pictures, right? This magazine's trying to portray and, and, and show that life really begins after midnight. Look at all these lights. Look at all this activity. Look at all these sinful things going on. All the pleasures of the world, right? Yep. You see, if Satan has a kingdom, he's got to have a false economy. He's got to have something that he can present to them to make them think they're living. But it's absolutely on the vice versa side. It's death in the form of life. See that? Yeah, it's true. 2 Corinthians 4. In whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. My. That's his purpose with this false economy. He's trying to blind your eyes. Now think about Satan's natural economy, his spiritual economy. Think about it. How you get how we can get so caught up in these things. And think about what it does. It blinds you to what you really need to do. It blinds you to your place in this economy of God. It blinds you to what really matters in life, right? Yep. Amen. Think about what Satan's doing, this movement. And it's universal. Again, let's look at the, let's look at the, uh, the natural movement. This, this, and, and there's good and bad in here. Remember, we're talking about the, knowledge of, the tree of knowledge of good and evil. That's what we were talking about in the beginning. You had these two economies, the, the tree of life, the economy of life, and you had the economy of good and evil, right? Those two trees in the garden, right there from the beginning they were. God allowed it for free moral agency. If there was only the tree of life or the economy of God and that was it, period, there'd be no free moral agency. Nothing to choose from. You have one choice. But God, as we'll see, had to express His attributes in His great economy to make free moral agency to do that, Right? No free or moral agency, God's attributes could not be expressed. There would be no need for them. There would be no need for a healer. There would be no need for a savior. There would be no need for this kind of things, right? So, Satan's taken this economy. This, this, remember now, it started out when we had all these little economies all over the world, and now it's starting to be all integrated into one. 
The whole world is becoming one big, great economy. They're pressing for world banks and world currencies and all kinds of world standards and the UN making up all kinds of standards to regulate the money and the business and all kinds of things, right? Satan is wanting that and pressing for it because he wants it all to be one, right? He wants to have control over it all. He wants to have massive control. So the same is happening spiritually. What is happening with the churches of today? Just forget about that little doctrine or this there or that black and white and just all come together. Let's all be one, right? That's what's happening today. He's trying to unite and merge the economies. That's what Satan wants. Unite for a common purpose is what combined means. So let me ask you something here. How can two walk together except they be agreed? Right? How can they do that? If, if in order to agree, to agree, you have to take out, uh, let me read this here. They have to take out everything that they may disagree on. That's how you walk together with somebody, with agree with them, because you've got to take all this. Either, either you step aside and you, you say, this is wrong, this is right, and you can't agree, then you just kind of set part your ways, right? Because you can't have fellowship with darkness. Light can't have fellowship with darkness. So, in order to walk together with two, and they disagree, you have to put aside all the, all the things you disagree on. If you do that, it creates a characterless, principleless, valueless, beliefless, worthless relationship. Think about that. It's true. Amen. Second Timothy 3 says here in verse 1, this know also that in the last days perilous times shall come, for men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truth breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high minded. You've seen all this? Lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof, from such turn away. Amen. It says in the last days. So this is the culmination of Satan's purpose with the economies that he's working with here. That's right. Amen. We're working closer and closer to this every day. Every day. Amen. But we have to come against it That's right. in the name of the Lord. Amen. Just as David came out against uh, Goliath in the name of the Lord, Amen. right? We must do the same to Amen. Satan's huge spiritual and natural economy. Yep. Amen. How do you think David felt when he came out to a Goliath and all these thousands of men were cowering? I mean, there had to have been some mind battles there. I mean, his natural senses were picking up this situation, right? And no doubt in the spiritual realm, fear was coming. Fear and these things were coming, and it, and it was just kind of, you know, it, it was really fighting this battle here, right? But he came against him in the name of the Lord. So no matter what's in front of you, this, this, this economy that Satan has, no matter what's in front of you, you've got to come to it in the name of the Lord by faith, right? Because David, by faith, and he even took past experiences. Look, the Lord was with me when I slew that lion, right? The Lord was with me when I slew that bear. I knew it wasn't me. It was Him. Amen. Because I got out of the way and I let Him build. I know He's the builder of this economy, right? He did that work right there with that lion. It wasn't me. Amen. So He even came with some experience and He allowed that to build His faith. Hey, whatever it takes to build your faith, let it be built. Amen. And then you can come to this great economy, this thing that Satan has in front of us, this giant Goliath, yep. and you can come to it in the name of the Lord and slay it. Amen. Cut its head off. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Sometimes, you know, we face temptations and things in this, in this great economy that Satan has on this earth, and we just got to cut its head off. That's right. We just got to, once and for all, cut its head off. Amen? Amen? Kill it right there. Amen. Sometimes these things can be painful for us to sever from our lives, Amen. but we've got to do it. Amen? Amen. Sure. Amen. Amen. Just think about that. Amen. I like to call Satan's economy, one thing I like to say is it's called the Laodicean economy. Amen. Laodicean economy. That's truly the false economy. Because as we'll look in Revelation 3, that's where we're going to go if you want to turn there. Revelation 3.14. This Laodicean economy Verse 15, 315, Revelation 315. Because, excuse me, verse 15. I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would that thou were cold or hot. 
Satan's economy is trying to make you lukewarm, saints. That's right. Amen. He's trying to bring this lukewarm state upon us. Amen. You know, where it's not black and white anymore. It's in the gray area, right? I, I did the best I could type of thing, right? That's what he wants you to do. So then, because thou art lukewarm, in verse 16, neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Because thou sayest, I am rich, and increase with goods, and have need of nothing, and knowest not thou that thou art wretched, and miserable, and poor, and blind, and naked. I counsel thee to buy of me gold, try to fire that they may be rich with white raiment, and thou may be clothed, that thy shame of thy nakedness do not appear, and anoint thy eyes with eye salve, that thou mayest see. Amen. Amen. So you see what's going on here? These people are rich and increased with goods. The natural economy of Satan, right? The spiritual economy of Satan's working, and they're blind. It's producing vanity. That's what Satan wants, this, this, this economy, this false economy. And this definition here, producing no results. That's what vain means. Producing no results. In other words, it's useless. Useless. Look at this. Having no meaning or likelihood or fulfillment. How many people do you know, and how much do we struggle with this, where we don't even have any purpose in life? We're just wandering aimlessly around, feeling sorry for ourselves, maybe, or some kind of trial hurting us or putting us down, and we don't really do a whole lot. We don't really have an impact on... uh, the impact that we should on Satan's economy, right? We need to impact that thing and tear it down. And we don't have that impact that God's calling us to have. You know, as bride members, who's going to be called to a higher calling than you? When we see people that are not even bride, and they're out here making a bigger dent in Satan's economy, as far as a negative dent, hurting it, that shouldn't be. That should not be. Here we are, you know, toiling away in this natural economy. Just And I've, I've been so guilty of this. So many times you just feel like, oh, I'm just tr- barely getting by. I'm trying to keep above water. It shouldn't be that way. Amen. If it's that way, we've got to check up. Something's wrong. Amen? We're not here to just struggle and barely get by. Amen. We're here to have the victory. Amen. We're here to overcome. Amen? Amen? We're here to be rich in this economy of God. Amen. 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 Not to produce no results and be useless, and not to have no meaning or likelihood or fulfillment. Amen. But that's what Satan's false economy produces. So that might be something we can check up with right there. If we feel this way, like we're producing no results and useless, and having no meaning, no likelihood, no, you know, nothing we're returning value, check up and see where you're spending, putting your time in, your resources in, right? What economy you're working in, right? Check up. Amen. Praise the Lord. You can always tell what economy you're in by what fruit you're bearing, right? <laughs> yeah. Amen. Whatever you're producing in that economy, you know, your workers in this economy, you're producing things. You know, you can look at your product and see what it is and you can tell which economy you're working in. Amen. Amen. So that's a little test for us all, right? Praise the Lord. Blessed are they that hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled, right? So the point we're talking about here is you've got to hunger and thirst for the right economy. Amen. I'm not saying to totally detach yourself we live in this world. We're of, you know, we're in this world. We have to, we have to, we have to make a living. We have to do things in this world, right? Amen. But it's what you thirst after, Amen. because it's a rule in the Bible, right? Whatever you sow, that's what you'll reap, Amen. right? So whatever you're thirsting for, that's what you're going to get. Amen. So the whole point is, you've got to thirst and hunger for the right things here, the right economy. You've got to thirst for. Amen. Amen. Luke one fifty three. He that hath, he hath filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he has sent away empty. Oh my. That's Luke 153. Amen. Luke 6, 21, if you want to turn there. Kind of what I just said there. Blessed are ye that hunger now, verse 21, for ye shall be filled. Blessed are ye that weep now, for ye shall laugh. Blessed are ye that when men hate you, and when they shall separate you from their company, and shall reproach you, and cast you out of your, out, uh, cast out your name as evil, for the Son of Man's sake. Rejoice ye in the day, and leap for joy, for behold, your reward is great in heaven. For in the like manner did your fathers unto the prophets. Woe unto them that are rich, for ye have received your consolation. Woe unto you that are full, for you shall hunger. Woe unto you that laugh now, 
for ye shall mourn and weep. Woe unto you when all men shall speak well of you, for so did their fathers to the false prophets. Yeah, oh my. So you see what's going on here? It's, where, it's what you're desiring. If right now all you're desiring is these, is these pleasures and these riches of the world, then later you're going to be empty. Because now, we're put on this earth right now to build our character. Amen. Right now we're put here to build that house, to Amen. build that economy, right? Amen. To build that wall. Amen. This is the only opportunity you're going to get. Amen. Right. right now in your life, right now. Take advantage of it. Amen. Amen. Make sure you hunger and thirst for that righteousness. Praise the Lord. You know, riches, we talk about money in this economy, and a lot of times our minds is fixated on, on physical money. But riches are not only, you know, when the Bible goes through it here, like we can turn to Proverbs 28, 22, He that hastened to be rich hath an evil eye, and considereth not that poverty shall come upon him. So a greedy man, in other words, in this other translation says, a greedy man is in a hurry for wealth. He doesn't know that poverty will come upon him. Right. You know, riches here, all through these scriptures in the Bible, there's so many scriptures on riches, is not always you is not always just talking about money. Amen. What so what else do we hold as value? Because riches are something of high value. Do we hold anything in our lives in this economy that shouldn't be there? That we regard, we take in such high regard that keeps us from the economy of God in a certain way, right? I mean, I, I don't, you know, you, you can think about that. Amen. We all have those battles. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Matthew six twenty four. Just an, uh, something to jot down: No man can serve two masters, for he will hate the one or love the other, or he will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and money. What man and is money. Amen. Think about you know the disciples of Jesus Christ going back to that day, and they all gather around him, and he says, "You know, I got to send you out into this wicked world to preach the gospel." And I know that there are the economy of Satan is so vast and great, and and, and all these things are going on in this economy, and it's going to come against you. But Jesus in Matthew, Mark, rather, Mark 6, 8 says, And He commanded them that they should take nothing for their journey, save a staff only, no scrip, no bread, no money in their purse. Right? So He basically sends them out what in their mind might look like sheep among wolves. Right? Sends them out. But God knew what He was doing here. Because going out in this vast... This, they're going out to face Goliath, right, in this vast economy of Satan, to preach the economy of God, to tell people about these great riches that, that people have lost. And he told them not even to take any money because in Luke 22, 35, if you want to turn there, it says, And he said unto them, When I sent you without a purse and a script and shoes, lacked ye anything? And they said, Nothing. We didn't lack a thing. We lacked all these material things and we didn't have any money. But, we, but you provided all of our needs. Amen. So think about that. That's one of the main things about these treasures and these riches. It's so hard for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of heaven because of all these things are a burden. These natural riches and cares are such a burden. There's so many temptations that come along with them and it's so difficult. So God knew that. He didn't want them to be hindered from this purpose of preaching the, the economy of God to, all, to all, the, all around them. So he sent them out with nothing so they couldn't be hindered by anything. <laughs> Isn't that something? Amen. So when God puts a task in front of you and you don't, think you're in, you, you, you don't think you're adequate enough, you don't think you have what it takes, you don't think that you, you, know, you don't have the right tools or knowledge or whatever, God will give that to you. God's doing that for a reason so you'll trust Him. Because right here, you can hold many things up as valuable things in your life, as riches aside from money. And He doesn't want that to hinder you. So if you're battling with something, maybe that's what's happening. God's trying to strip that from you so you'll trust Him. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. His ways are above our ways. Amen. That's right. We, we can't always understand it, but we know His heart. Right? We don't always understand His mind or His head, but we know His heart. Amen. Praise the Lord. And his Word speaks His heart to us. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. 
Solomon. You know, the story was great about Solomon. I really enjoyed when he come and he was beginning in his kingdom there, this great economy that God had established for them, the greatest time they've seen, you know, Israel has seen. And, and Solomon, God comes to Solomon and says, ask whatever you want and I'll give it, right? What do you want? And you notice how that Solomon didn't ask for riches or wealth or fame or power, things like that. He asked for a gift of wisdom. Wisdom to know how to operate in this great economy that God has set up for him. Right? Didn't God set that up? I mean, Solomon didn't set that up, did he? No, he didn't set the, the, the great glorious state that Israel was in at that time. All those natural riches and things and, and the spiritual riches were flowing abundantly. Right? Solomon didn't set that up. No man set that up. It was God. Amen. So Solomon said, he recognized this God. What do I do? Now put yourself in Solomon's shoes. This is for you to learn from. Solomon, God what, said, what can I do, God? What do I need? Yes, that's what I need, wisdom, to run this great economy, to work in this great economy. For your people, it was a gift, yeah, right? So let's ask the same things in this great economy of God that he set up for us. And he will work marvelously. Look at, look at all the things that happened in Solomon's life. There was nothing, nobody ever seen anything like it. The Queen of Sheba came and said the half was not even told. Amen. My, I find that hard to believe. Do you know that when gossip travels and word, you know, and information travels, it gets greater and greater as it goes? So even what she heard was probably greater than what was originally being told. And still it wasn't even the half of it. Amen. Right? So imagine that. I mean, we, it's just so unfathomable, the riches. And he was a, this was a type showing the economy that God wants to establish spiritually in your lives. Ask for the right thing so you can help God build that economy. Because Solomon didn't say, hey, give me riches and wealth and fame and power so that I can continue to build this kingdom. He said, give me wisdom so that I can work with you, God, because you are the author of wisdom, Amen. right? Amen. Yes. So that was a wonderful story. Amen? So we ought to follow that example. If you want to turn with me to Jeremiah 9. Please, 23. As you turn, keep this in mind. He that serves God for money will serve the devil for better wages. <laughs> so if you're all about serving God for money, the devil can pay you better. Physical money now, right? Let's go to Joseph too. Just hold your place there in the Scripture. Joseph said... Joseph of Arimathea came in Matthew 27, and he had a choice. Because we have a choice here. That's what we're getting at. We have a choice. You've got to choose between these economies. And Joseph came and saw Jesus Christ carrying this cross, this heavy burden, right? Carrying this heavy burden. And he had a choice. Do I help him or not? Do I work with him or not? Right? Right? So he had, he had an economy to choose here because this man was rich, the Bible says. He had many riches. And he knew that if he got in there with that, with that uh, how do I want to say, in a respectful manner, that castaway, right? This crazy man, this lunatic. Isn't that what they thought Jesus was? This radical lunatic. This radical young man comes along and tries to tell me, a ruler, how to be spiritual? Tries to tell me about the Word of God? Who is this man? He, he comes from a carpenter. Look at his background. He, doesn't, he has no money. He has no status. He has no power. He has no education. That man's a lunatic. He's out of his mind. So imagine what Joseph was battling here. He knew in his heart that was right. He knew that he needed to get there and help him carry that cross. They compelled him, but he still had to make the decision. God's compelling you, but you still got to make the decision. You still got to free more agency, right? There's people at work, you know, and I, I have responsibility over people uh, to do functions at work, and, and I know right now that I can't, my, my style is I don't want to force people. I never want to force people. I mean, as an absolute last resort, if I have to, if somebody really won't comply, 
uh, you know, and even at that, I, there's disciplinary action and other things you can do. But the point is you lead by love. Your leadership means that people follow you because they want to. Right? Because they want to. That's when you get their, your heart, their heart. The heart will come. You know, I don't just want, it, like let's say it in a workplace, I don't just want people's hands. I can force their hands. You have to do that or, or I'll fire you. Right? I not only want their hands, I want their mind, their head, I want their heart, right? Because there's so much more to people than just their hands. Well, God knows that. That's why He's given you free more agency. Because He wants all of you. If He forced you, then all He's going to get is that legalism in your hands, right? You just do works, right? So Joseph had a decision here. He come in knowing what was right, knowing the persecution, knowing the ridicule, knowing this great economy of Satan that was there. And even in the natural economy, he was rich, the Bible said. He chose to carry that cross. He chose it. Amen. I think it was Joseph, right? I have the, I have the wrong scripture here, but the man that came to carry the cross with Jesus. Matthew 27 says, the rich man of Arimathea named Joseph came and begged the body of Jesus. I'm sorry, I had the wrong example. What was the, what was the man's name that carried the cross, brother, with him, that helped him? They compelled Simon. I'm sorry about that. Forgive me. But still, that applies too, right? I had, the, I had the wrong Scripture here. Forgive me. But let's go to this Scripture in Matthew 27 because this is, applies the same way. In Matthew 27, 57, And when evening was come, a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph, who himself was Jesus' disciple, he went to Pilate and begged the body of Jesus. Then Pilate commanded the body to be delivered. And when Joseph had taken the body, he wrapped it in a, in a clean linen cloth and laid it in his own new tomb, which he hewn out of the rock and rolled a great stone to the door of the sepulcher and departed. So you see, this is the same principle I'm talking about. Forgive me about that. I'm really sorry about that. So he, he had a choice too. He came and said, hey, if I choose to do this, I'm going to have scorn and people are going to laugh on me because everybody thinks he's a lunatic. I'll be on his side if I help him, right? So he came and made that choice. Amen. So we have, we have a choice, saints. Jeremiah 9, let's go to that which we originally called out. Jeremiah 9, 23. Thus saith the Lord, Let not the wise man glory in his wisdom, neither let the mighty man glory in his might. Let not the rich man glory in his riches, but let him that glorieth glory in this. He that understandeth and knoweth me, that I am the Lord God, the Lord, rather, which exercised loving kindness, judgment, and righteousness in the earth. For these things I delight, saith the Lord. You see the choice here? Let not the rich man pick this, let not man pick this economy of Satan, or this natural economy, pick the spiritual economy. Amen? Amen. Joshua said in 20, verse 20, chapter 24, Choose ye this day whom you will serve. Amen. As for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. Amen. Amen. So we've got to make that decision right now. Amen. Who are you going to serve? Amen. Praise the Lord. Yes, sir. Let me just find a place to close here. We do a couple more. Is this all right? Amen. Amen. I know this is simple. I know that. You know, but this is where we're at, right? I think so many times this economy, this this economy of God, we just we're not walking in it like we should. There's so much here for you that you can have. Me that I can have. Amen. I was just thinking the other day and talking to Brother Brooks about it. You know, I just one of the things I'm dealing with is I, I, I want to become who God wants me to become. I want to be built into this stature of a perfect man. There's things in my life that I see that I gotta build into. I gotta be built into. I gotta let him do the work. And it's just such a fire shut up in my bones, right? You ever feel that way? Where you're just ready to burst? Because you just you just you want to get there so bad. You want to get to that point over here and you think you're not making enough progress, right? You think you're not moving fast enough. But He'll do the work. Amen. Right? All these principles we talked about. Follow these principles. This is the economy of God. This is how we build it and grow in it. Amen? Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. So we have to choose. Amen? Praise the Lord. Satan is a god of mixing, as we said. And look at this definition of mix. Blend, mix up, mingle, combine, put together, jumble, fuse, unite, uni- unify, join, marry. <laughs> and this is what Satan's trying to do with his kingdom, with his economy with you. But the Lord God is a God of separation. Yes, sir. 
segregation, as a matter of fact. Look at this. The segregation is the action or state of setting someone or something apart from other people or things being set apart. Amen. Yeah. How many times do we say, if only I had enough money, I could do this or I could do that, right? <laughs> God help us. God help us. You have everything you need. Amen. It's already within you. Amen. It's just got to be cultivated. Amen. God help us. We don't need the riches of mammon to do God's work. Amen. He'll provide. Amen. Amen. Yes. Help us. Amen. Acts 8. A couple more here as we close. Oh my. Simon, Acts 8, 14 through 22. Simon the sorcerer, he comes among this, this Holy Ghost filled group of people and he sees the things that are going on, right? And Simon the sorcerer is very used to Satan's economy. He's used to working in that economy, right? His motives and objectives show forth the truth. That's the, he likes to work in that false economy. So he comes along and he sees these things happening in, in Acts 14 through 22 and he says, hey, I want to buy that from you. How much can I give you to buy that Holy Ghost so that whoever I pray for can receive it too? If only I had enough money, I could do this for God and that for God. This Scripture is serious here. Right? Peter looks at him and said, Thy money perish with thee because thou hast thought the gift of God may be purchased with money. You are never going to get somebody the Holy Ghost through money. If God has a purpose in your life and He wants you to work in the kingdom of God, right? And he, Brother Isaiah probably, you know, definitely knows this. He got travel here and travel there and do this and do that. Where's all this money come from? Where's all this funding come from? Where's all this resources come from? God provides, Amen. right? Amen. So don't stand there and look at your purpose and think, boy, I know that God wants me to do this, but I don't know how to get there and I don't have the money. If only I had enough money and things like that. You're not going to buy that. God will provide. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Yes, sir. Amen. Let us stand here together. Stretch a little bit there and we'll, we'll close on this next portion. Praise the Lord. I'm so thankful for this. What God's taught me through this. We can just get out of the way, right? Matthew 19, 23. Then Jesus said unto his disciples, Verily I say unto you, the rich man shall hardly enter into the kingdom of heaven. And again I say unto you, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. But his disciples heard it, and they were exceedingly amazed, saying, Who can be saved? But Jesus beheld them, and said unto them, With men it is impossible, but with God all things are possible. Amen. Take courage. All things are possible through God. Verse 27, Then Peter said unto him, Behold, we have forsaken all to follow thee. What shall we have therefore? Good question, isn't it? And Jesus said unto them, Verily I say unto you, that ye which have followed me in the regeneration, when the Son of Man shall sit on the throne of his glory, you shall also sit upon twelve thrones, judging the tribes, twelve tribes of Israel. Know ye not, you shall judge the earth. Right? Saints shall judge the earth. And every one that hath forsaken this natural economy, houses, or brethren, or sisters, or fathers, or mothers, or wife, or children, or lands, for my name's sake, shall receive a hundredfold, and shall inherit everlasting life. But many that are first shall be last, and the last shall be first. That's what Jesus told the rich young ruler as well. He said, you can't, you can't mix these two economies. 
he says, I've done all these things. You know, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus starts rattling off these, these things of the economy of God. Keep, the, you know, keep these commandments, you know, honor your father and mother things. And he says, all these things I've done from my youth. What, what lack I yet? And Jesus says, you've got to sell all you have. And follow me. You've got to truly sell out everything you have Amen. and follow God. Amen? Amen? Doesn't necessarily mean that you've got to sell all your material possessions. Sell that desire for those material possessions. Right? And if there's temptations in your life, you know, many riches, which hardly any of us are, you know, really rich as far as uh, money in our own eyes, but yet the United States is rich. Look, compare ourselves. We have so much. We are so rich. So don't put yourself, don't think that, oh, I'm safe because I'm not up here in this millionaire bracket. Your riches really, I mean, you just have abundant riches. And you don't have to be a millionaire to have abundant riches. Compare yourself to the rest of the world. So sell that out. Don't try to mix the two. Right? As we close on this last scripture, I just thought this was a blessing. In Genesis 14, 21, And the king of Sodom said unto Abram, Give me the persons and take the goods to thyself. And Abram said to the king of Solomon, I have lift up mine hand unto the Lord, the Most High God, the possessor of heaven and earth, that I will not take from a thread even to a shoe latchet, that I will, and that I will not make anything that is thine. I will not take anything that is thine, rather, lest thou shouldest say, I have made Abram rich. Amen. Isn't that a good scripture for this economies that we're talking about? Let's be like Abraham, amen, the father of faith. Hallelujah. Amen. As we bow our heads here, let's, let's close in a word of prayer. Lord Jesus, we thank you for this time here, Lord. Father, this certainly was a battle, a real battle, Lord. Uh, Satan battling spiritually, Lord God. But Father, we claim the blood of Jesus Christ. We overcome by the blood of Jesus Christ. And Lord God, I pray, Father, that something was touched, Lord. Father, I, Lord, this word is so rich, Father, and abundant, Lord. You have. Your economy is so great for us, Lord. And Satan wants to keep us from it, Lord. He wants us, Lord God, to be bestowed away and this out of sight, Lord. He just wants us to see what he has to offer. He wants us to think, Lord, just as a blind man who's never had sight in his life doesn't know what it's like to see. He doesn't know the riches and the, the depth and the glory of seeing vivid images. Lord, your nature you've created. He doesn't know it. And that's what Satan wants us to be. He wants us to be blind from birth and never see this glorious economy that you have prepared for us, Lord. But help us to be born again, Lord, because at that point in time, when we are born again, Lord, receive the Holy Spirit of God in our soul. Our eyes are opened to this economy. We enter into it. We are now workers in the economy. We now have that faith currency to make transactions and to buy the things that we have need of, Lord. Help us, Lord Jesus, we pray. Father, let this thing burst this open to us, Lord. Father, manifest and reveal Yourself to us in this great way, Lord, in this hour. For we desire Your riches, Lord. Help us, Father, to put away the things of the world, the cares of the world, Lord. Father, anything that might be battling in the flesh, Lord, the natural world, Lord, help us, Father. This natural economy, Lord, we want to detach from, Lord, as much as possible and attach to You, Lord. May You be our all in all, Lord. May we lean on You and trust in You. May You be our riches, Lord. Help us to lay up treasures in heaven, Lord, I pray. Oh, Lord, we thank You. In Jesus Christ's name we pray.